Anyway, here I come from. Do you experience seeing an inner light when you come to deep meditation? I've heard that some spiritual gurus do that. What is that light? Yeah, everyone will see that light. We call it nimitta. It's just what happens when the mind, the jitta, uh, can be perceived. Usually when the five senses, seeing, seeing hearing, a smell, taste, and physical touch gets so suppressed, so calmed down. But then that's what you can see. It's just like when you turn, when the sun goes down, then you can see the stars at night. That's why I think it was actually in one of uh, those little, um, what was it, those concerts which the Buddhist Fellowship used to do. They, they said their little joke that my my father's teeth are like the stars. They come out at night. <laughs> <laughs> teeth are like the stars, false teeth, I can. And we got that from the Buddhist fellowship. I thought you might remember that. But yes, so that when the five senses disappear, then you can see the, the mind, which usually appears as a beautiful light. And they say everyone will do that anyway, because when you die, you go towards the light, which is the same thing. So it happens when the five senses get calmed down. And you're not thinking. You're perfectly aware. The beautiful light can be seen in, in the mind. That's called nimitta. That's not the end of meditation. That's you know, getting into deep meditation, but you get more than that. And those of you who think, oh, that's too advanced by me. For me, I can only see a, you know, a few little things of peace and quiet. I can hardly watch my breath. Sometimes you'll be surprised. Sometimes in meditating you feel comfortable, you feel calm. Sometimes when you least expect it, you get into deep meditations and you see these beautiful lights in your mind. There's other limiters and very many people see them. So it's always really nice and very good. Dear Bhante, to continue with your last night talk, does an animal being reborn into the human realm according to the Buddhist teachings? He said, it is difficult to be born a human, however we can see how cool these people can be. Do they get to be born as human in the first place? How do they get to be born in a few, as a human in the first place? Please comment and thank you. <coughs> it is true that in the time of the Buddha, it did seem to me there wasn't that many human beings around, so it was much more difficult. Nowadays, the population of humans has increased many, many fold. So as I usually say, there's more rooms in the hotels of the world. So it's much easier to get a birth a room as a human being in a, in a mother's room. You know, when I grew up, just traveling on an aircraft was incredibly rare. You had to be very wealthy to get on an aircraft. Now just, here's a plug for Air Asia. Now everyone can fly, <laughs> as they say. So now many people, many beings can get reborn as humans now. Which does, you know, uh, explain why there are some very high-minded humans, but very low-minded, violent humans as well. Because they really, I would say, belong in the animal world. But, you know, there's not that many places they can get reborn in as animals, so they come into our realm, to the human realm. If a person is not reincarnated immediately, then he is meanwhile a ghost. How has he or she gone to the ghost world while waiting to become a human being again? Isn't this the reason why different people take different peers to become human again, they are in the ghost realm. You know, it's like, a, it's like a waiting realm, where you wait for a rebirth, but it's also if a person you know, gets basically stuck in that intermediate realm, they can uh, live a long time as a ghost. But it's an interesting question, how long can you stay as a ghost in that realm? And the only thing I can do is use anecdotal evidence. Because remember that uh, I was part of the Psychic Research Society in England and they're famous for their ghosts. So many ghosts over in the UK. And they would investigate them. And it's very rare to find a ghost which was more than a couple of hundred years old. And so, you know, just anecdotal evidence. Ghosts are usually you know, recently departed. You know, maybe 50 years, 100 years, 150 years maybe, but to get a very ancient ghost is very, very rare. So that gives you some information that maybe just after 100, 150 years they realize they have to move on. So it's not that many really, really, really old ghosts. 
how should we act towards our loved ones from stopping smoking and other bad habits that we know should be harmful to his or her health? What is the effective way of advising them to stop the bad habit for their benefit? Again, sometimes uh, just cajoling them, telling them it's bad for their health is not really good enough because it's not just a physical health, it's a mental health. You have to join the two of them together. And so if they're enjoying smoking and they got a lot of um, satisfaction out of it, sometimes it does need to be um, substituted for something which is even better. So it's hard to go up an addiction if you've got nothing else. So that's why sometimes <coughs> Teaching them something even better than getting the nicotine fix, like a meditation fix, or you know, other joyful activities in your life, and that is really, really important because, as uh, Shakespeare said, a man does not live by bread alone. You have to have meaning in your life, joy in your life, purpose in your life, which gives you emotional satisfaction. And if you don't have that purpose, that joy in your life, then a lot of times that uh, you go to addictions because that's all you have to give you pleasures. So this is one of the reasons why one of the great ways of getting meaning in life is to do service. Service for, for others. So all the people who work hard, either selling the shirts in the back or selling the books, the people who organize and look after you here, they actually get a lot of happiness out of service. It gives people meaning. Yeah, you can do your job in Singapore, wherever you are coming from, but just doing your job is not enough. Look after your kids, that gives you a lot of meaning and happiness if you're lucky enough to have good kids. If you have little monsters, it gives you a lot of suffering. <laughs> but most of them are okay. So little by little you find your meaning in life, and when you have a meaning in life, you don't need to sort of have these uh, harmful addictions. So if it's one of your loved ones that smokes, just telling them not to smoke is not good enough. You have to give them an alternative meaning why they shouldn't smoke. My daughter, in late twenties, about 20 years of age, she is a 3D artist, graduated from one of the art schools in Los Angeles. She is very passionate on what she's doing. Now she's moved back home, where, whereby the 3D industry is far from developed compared to the United States. She works very hard and gets very frustrated for not being able to market her production. On the other hand, she has anxiety and overthinking on lots of things. She worries about lots of things, except listen to Except, listen to her what kind of advice is best for her. She is quite knowledgeable, but many times does not know how to do with her anxiety, etc. You know, one of the great things with meditation in stillness, it also makes you very innovative. And innovation is very important you know, for success in our modern world. We can't just do things the old way. If it's in art, or if it's in uh, technology or engineering, we have to break new ground. And uh, I've mentioned to you in previous talks that uh, 2015 I was invited to South Korea to give the keynote address at the 2015 World Computer Congress. And many people ask me, what am I doing giving a keynote address at a congress for, for nerds and IT sort of fanatics? And I said that one of the things I'm doing there is about innovation, seeing things in a new way. Which if you're an artist or anywhere in any uh, tradition, any field of employment is so crucial to your success. And what I did, I picked up a, a bottle of water like this, which was on the table when I was giving my keynote address in front of the whole uh, number of participants. And I can do the same exercise with you now. 
I want you to please participate. What is it that I'm holding up now? What do you see? Yes, what else do you see? What else do you see? Now, first of all, there's no right answer here. Keep on looking. What else do you see? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? And you keep on going until you've run out of all the labels. Because all those labels is what you've been taught at school, at university. Plastic, bottle, water, cylindrical, whatever else you say. You keep on looking until you run out of labels. And then there's a good chance you may be able to see this in a way which you haven't been taught. A new way. Innovative way. Insight. Seeing things from a totally different angle and perspective. The problem is, because we've been taught, you hold something up and people say it's a bottle of water and they don't take their investigation any further. They think that's the right answer and they don't go deeper. That's the difference between following your learning and being innovative. Seeing things which other people haven't seen. Not really be taught, but seeing it and fresh. And if you're good at this, you can hold up a bottle of water and you can keep seeing new things in it. Half an hour, an hour, and you're still seeing new things. That means you'll be very good at art as well as R&D research. See something which no one else has seen. Putting aside the old knowledge and seeing things from a new perspective. So this is actually how the silence, the stillness which you develop in meditation, which basically stops all the old knowledge, allows you to see things afresh. So if you're doing 3D art, Forget all that you learnt in L.A. Forget that. Take it further. Take it deeper. Do something which no one else has done. The meditation will help you there. Anxiety doesn't get you anywhere. It just blocks innovation, stops you producing stuff. So, and of course, meditation, mindfulness is one of the great ways of overcoming anxiety. Okay.